communicate this tale to every storyteller in the house. My dad was a fighter pilot. Flying was his passion. And I wondered if flying would be my passion too. So I took some flying lessons in a Cessna 150 single engine aircraft. I had to, I had to find out how to stall a plane in mid-flight and recover it. The instructor showed me how to do it. He said, pull back on the yoke and the plane climbs at a steep angle. Then you pull off the power. And then the stall horn goes. It goes, and then you put your right foot on the pedal. That's important because when a plane is in a stall, it's not flying. It's quit flying, and there's no air movement around the wings. Now, the wings are not operating, and the plane wants to follow the rotation of the propeller. The right rudder keeps that plane from going into a deadly spin. Now, to recover from a stall, you shove the yoke forward, the nose goes down, and you slam in the power and take your foot off the rudder. Well, <laughs> these stalls, you know, they sounded scary at first, but they were really wimpy. I mean, the instructor was so careful. Finally, after 15 hours of instruction, I got to fly solo. I got to be alone in the aircraft, no supervision. And I wanted to experience a hammerhead stall. So, I took the plane 4,000 feet above the San Francisco Bay Area. Down below me, the tide had gone out and the mud flats were exposed. I aimed the aircraft, not at a steep climb, but straight up in the air. And I pulled off the power. The stall horn sounded. I pushed in the left rudder pedal. Oh, see, see, there you go. I'm in my first airplane spin. I hadn't been schooled in this. I, I was alone in the aircraft. Now, if I had punched in the right rudder pedal, it would have been prevented. But no, I had to push the left rudder pedal. Now it is exacerbated. And I'm, I'm in a spin. Now, spins are kind of relative. If you are on the outside of the cockpit, and you're looking at a Cessna in a spin, the the nose is pointed toward the earth. It's almost balletic. The wings are gracefully turning at a revolution a second. But inside the cockpit, it's ah! It's going around in a mile a minute. I've got to get the nose up. I pull the yoke back. Nothing. I pull it back again. Nothing. This plane isn't responding. I go through my brain cells at the speed of light. What? A story. I know this story. My buddy Springer told it to me one lazy day at work. He was describing five French supersonic aircrafts. They were all the same type, but they were dangerous. They'd reach the speed of sound and then start tumbling. And the pilots couldn't bring them out of the tumble. They lost four French test pilots. One after the other went to their fiery deaths trying to bring this plane out of a tumble. Well, the fifth pilot goes up, very brave, same kind of aircraft. He hits that wall of sound, and the plane goes into a tumble, but miraculously, he brings it out. They ask him how he did it. Well. I thought I would die like the rest, but I decided I would go out in a blaze of glory. I shoved the stick to the firewall. I said, Vive la France! <laughs> but the plane, instead of going out in a blaze of glory, the plane comes out as a tumble, goes into a dive. I feel the control return to the stick. I pull it back. I land safely. I jam the yoke into the forward, and, and, and the Cessna stops spinning. It goes into a terminal dive, but it's going at 150 miles an hour because I have the full 
full throttle in. The mud flats are coming at me at 150 miles an hour. I pull the yoke back and I ease out at 2,000 feet. I fell from 4,000 to 2,000 feet, half the way to Earth. Damn. I almost bought it. This wasn't my passion. <laughs> Nevertheless, I was carrying a truckload of, of stories around in my head. Stories were my passion. That's why I'm here with you tonight. We're going to share all these stories because you never know which one will save your life. Yeah.